Let's conclude our three-part series on teeth whitening. Roll that intro. What's up everyone, Dr. Eric Jackson here. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, we're going to conclude our three-part series on teeth whitening. <clears throat> In part one, we talked about the nuts and bolts of teeth whitening. Um, you know, does it contain bleach? What does it contain? What types of general categories are there out there? Um, you know, gels and toothpaste and, and, uh, and rinses. Uh, in part two, we talked about more patient-centric, uh, re, you know, expectations of patients, responsibility as a patient's, uh, expectations of the conversation that has to happen between the dental professional and the patient in order to achieve success that's, uh, you know, enjoyed by both uh, patient and professional. Then today, let's talk a little bit more about the specific types of whitening uh, to kind of round everything out. Uh, there really are three um, over-the-counter, uh, take home custom trays and in office power power whitening right so number one uh, over the counter uh, over the counter and and all these have their place I'll start by saying that um, I don't ever think that um, one is is, is 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 you know useless or that doesn't work whatever that kind of stuff doesn't that doesn't apply it depends on like we said in part two your expectations how much effort you want to put into it all the different aspects, and that's why it's great that there's so many different products out there. Um, Over-the-counter trays are typically, um, you know, people usually associate them with Crest white strips or something along the lines. The, 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 the plastic film that has the gel on it that you put up onto the actual teeth, um, much like a, I always describe it to patients, um, it's semi-custom or it's trying to be custom, right? Uh, but it's not custom. Just like an over-the-counter night guard, um, they're not bad. I recommend them all the time for diagnostics, for, for immediate need, because you can't make a custom night guard overnight or within 30 minutes, but you can go to the pharmacy and, and, and warm it up and pop it in. Um, I like over-the-counter for the person that doesn't think they're going to be able to really, you know, produce the responsibility or they don't want to put all the financials into it or the time. It's always about time, effort, and money, right? Um, everything in dentistry, most things in life, frankly, um, and I really try to make sure that I preach that uh, to my patients as well. So time, effort, and money, obviously, over-the-counter Crest white strip style uh, is going to be the least, um, the least money. It's usually the most, you know, the inexpensive of the gel options. Um, it's not typically as uh, effective as the other two options, but it does give you minimal effort for it. You kind of just put them on, you see what you get, and you're good. If your expectations are a slight whitening or... If your financials are limited, it's great. Um, so overall, uh, over-the-counter white strips, over-the-counter whitening strips, we'll call them, right? They have their place. Number two, uh, my favorite, uh, because it's kind of a happy medium between all, uh, all the three, is the take-home custom whitening trays. Um, take-home custom whitening trays provide a great bang for your buck, you know, they're, 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 not, they're not the most expensive. They're not the least expensive option of the three. They're right in the middle. They deliver fantastic quality. Um, there are, you know, it does require some patient responsibility, of course. They have to do their jobs, and you have to teach them how to do it. And there's a lot of back and forth. But ultimately, it comes down to it's by far my favorite. And I think, you know, 99% of the time, we're recommending uh, take-home whitening trays. Well, why is that also? Um, they're reusable. So as long as the dentistry doesn't change very much, um, you can have the same whitening trays hypothetically for years and years and years, and then you can just um, apply new gel periodically. Um, one thing we didn't touch on is how often do you have to re-whiten your teeth? Is this a forever? Well, it depends on your diet, all the things that we talked about in part one, diet, genetics, age, things like that. But in general, um, you're going to absolutely get six months of the new whitening out of it. If you're a heavy coffee drinker, smoker, pipe smoker, things like that, everything seems to fall off much quicker depending on the, the risk factors of, of, of the, you know, the unwhitening, if you will. But in general, you know, most of my patients, they feel the need to kind of touch up their whitening annually, um, some every two years. Um, if you really have high expectations of maintaining the ultimate whitening, you might do it every six months um, because ultimately, again, it comes back to part two, expectations.
So um, over-the-counter trays are great for that because once you get the actual fabrication process out of the way, um, the gel can be purchased and it can kind of go you know, on autopilot until larger you know, dental items happen, you know, like crowns or, 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 or bridges or dental implants or things like that. Typically a filling uh, is not as um, detrimental to the trays. They might be actually able to continue using them even after, you know, the patient might be able to continue using them after a small filling. Um, so it's kind of nice to be able to have that in your back pocket. Um, in addition, you get to have the option of different types of gels. Different types of gels uh, have different strengths, have different additives. Um, some are basically, they're more prone, more, more power-based or more uh, comfort-based, right? People with very sensitive teeth, you can't use that same uh, powerful gel on them because it'll be very unpleasant, very painful, in fact. And that's something that's very important to talk about prior to doing any whitening. Um, the, pa the person usually knows, the patient knows, do you have in general, chronic sensitive teeth. Every time you have a glass of water or go cold water, do your teeth always hurt? Every winter, are you, you know, more prone to keep your mouth closed than open because of the cold air? Um, that kind of, those kinds of questions, those kinds of conversations are very telling. And pe people know. Um, and when in doubt, you start with a gentle solution and they can always try it out and ramp up you know, to the more powerful solutions. Um, going the other way is, of course, possible, but less desirable. So you've got longevity on the trays. You've got flexibility on the trays. Um, you've got more efficiency. You know, the, the, the white strips, the over-the-counter white strips, they just have the gel across. You don't, depending on the width of your smile, the size of your smile. Um, I'm a pretty tall, big guy. I've got a wider, bigger set of teeth than someone who's perhaps on the you know, shorter stature, more petite size. Um, the white strips have changed size over the years. Uh, they've gotten wider, better, more accommodating than they were initially. Uh, they were initially, they were quite short. They would only go perhaps premolar or premolar. Um, the neat part is with custom trays, they are custom. They will fit your teeth as snugly. They will hold the gel up against the teeth as ideally as possible. They will minimize the leakage and the potential for uh, gum burning, uh, temporary gum burning. Um, they'll just provide you the best of all worlds, uh, better than any over-the-counter strip. That leads us to the third option, which it, it, it is a useful tool. Um, In-office power whitening, right? Um, it, there's lots of terms for it. There's been, you know, with laser whitening and there's, you know, uh, there's brand names like Zoom out there. Um, I usually call it in-office power whitening because the whole point of this is it's, it's powerful. You want to really make sure that everything is kind of described to what it is. You're taking the classic two weeks and condensing it down into, you know, an hour and a half, hour, two hour appointment, somewhere along that line. Condensing that has pros and cons. Uh, essentially, you're gonna have the same destination, as I like to describe, you'll, you'll, you'll get to the same place as the uh, take home custom trays, but you'll do it in a much faster way. Uh, the sacrifice you're going to have is potentially more in intense discomfort, uh, but also there's lots of benefits, especially when you start mixing with restorative treatments. Uh, you're able to do a lot more at once. You're not going to have a two-toned appearance uh, or at least as much a two-toned appearance, and you can always supplement with trays afterwards should you desire. desire. You don't have the flexibility that you do with the at-home whitening, but with that said, you do gain other aspects. Um, we do far more at home whitening trays, you know, the custom trays, uh, than we do power whitening. Um, but ultimately it's a great tool in the toolbox uh, for the office to have because some patients know they're not going to be as compliant. They're not gonna take their responsibilities as a patient to wear it correctly, to abide by all the suggestions um, as seriously as they should. They know that and so they just wanna get it done and then move on. That's a very good tool for those patients. Um, talk to your patients, communicate. You know, one of my major pillars of the office is communication. That's why we have this YouTube channel, but it's also why we talk to our patients in such a you know, in-depth fashion. Increase their dental IQ. Make sure they're knowledgeable as much as possible about the topic where they're going to be making decisions because they're their teeth with whitening. You can't really go wrong. Uh, all three gel options, toothpaste, you know, they're, they're all options that are viable, but you want to make sure you satisfy their expectations 
and and then you could exceed them hypothetically if you can as well. So thank you very much for uh, sitting with me during these three uh, this three part series. You know, whitening is a, a very common topic, uh, but it's often I find um, kind of just blitzed through. It's a very in-depth discussion that has to happen prior to doing these procedures and making sure that the right um, tools, the methods, modalities that you're going to use are, are, are appropriate for that patient in particular. Um, so take some of these ideas, comment below if you have any questions or comments. I love hearing from the, um, uh, the, the, the viewership. Uh, and speaking of viewership, thank you so much for watching. Um, please, if you like the video, uh, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, when you do so, hit the bell. So that way it'll pop up on your uh, cell phone and whenever I upload a new one. Um, and most of all, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care now. Bye-bye.